I need to sit there. <laughs> Move. That's where I sit. No. Hi guys, welcome back to a page in the chapter and welcome if you are new here and welcome back to another vlog. <laughs> today we are doing another reading vlog, except the plan today is to read books set in cities that I was supposed to visit on my year abroad that ended up not going ahead because Covid sucks. And I've had this list of cities that I want to visit for over a year now and it's still not really looking like I'm gonna be able to visit them so I figured let's just do a load of research and find books set in these cities and read them. So the places that we will be visiting in this blog are Amsterdam, Sicily, Italy, Paris and Prague. There will be five places that we will visit in this vlog and that is five books. I have already planned them out and uh, maybe take a guess and see which ones you think I'm gonna pick for this. Maybe take a stab at it down in the comments and guess at what books I might pick for each place slash city. So yeah this is an idea that I've had for a very long time but I didn't ever think that I would get around to doing it or like finding books set in these places was a little bit of a chore. Especially in terms of like finding books that I was interested in reading set in these places was a chore. But I've done it. I'm now very happy with the decisions that I have made and I I'm starting this vlog today. If you guys like the sound of this video and you want to stick around and see more why not hit that big red subscribe button down below. I'm really getting back into doing some themed vlogs at the moment. I did my 21 in 21. I am now doing this video that I have no idea what to title that is going to be coherent and not extremely wordy but we'll figure that out later. Yeah maybe subscribe if you are interested. I'm hoping to do much more of this kind of content going forward. I don't think that I'm gonna be reading today. I read two books just yesterday alone. July is getting off to a great start for me but I'm really really tired today. I've woken up on the wrong side of bed. I think I'm very hungry so I don't think I'm gonna do any reading today. So the city that I have decided to visit first is Paris and so I have chosen Anna and the French kiss can you not choke whilst i'm on camera so i know this book gets a little bit of a bad rap on booktube and that's because it has a cheating trope it has a cheating element but i don't mind the cheating element i think that stephanie parkins handles it in a good way i feel like the cheating element in this is very similar to the cheating element in angus thongs and perfect snogging it's done in a very i really like you I've kissed you, now I need to go sort out my own life and deal with the situation I've got myself into. And so, whilst this does get a little bit of a bad rap, I love this book so much. And I'm not going to apologise for that. I think I can love this book whilst understanding the flaws of this plot. So I am deciding to reread this. I am getting through the Stephanie Perkins books very, very slowly. Oh. Do you mind? I am getting through the Stephanie Perkins books very, very slowly because I want to make them last. So I currently have only read Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door over the past like four or five years. Like I'm really dragging these out. But I have now finally ordered Isla and the Happily Ever After. So I'm gonna reread these books whilst I wait for that to arrive and then just read them all in a row basically. So I have decided to pick this as my getaway for Paris because I know I love this book. I'm in the mood for a summer contemporary and it just it's just fitting. So as I said, I don't think I'm gonna read today because I'm just not in the mood at all, but maybe the mood will strike this evening. So I will update you when I do start reading. Like now that I have eaten my Sunday lunch and watched the Formula One, I am in a much better mood to read. So I think I'm gonna start Anna and the French Kiss. And to be honest, I might be able to finish it in one go, which is a pretty bold claim, but Stephanie Perkins just do be that author. Like I can read Morgan Matson in one go, which I did yesterday. Maybe I can carry the same momentum and read this all in one go, but we will see. I'm ready to start Anna and the French Kiss, which I think I'm gonna go do now. I am loving this experience. I forgot how much I love this book and this was already a great vlog idea. Like I'm just enjoying it so much. It really feels 
a little bit a smidge like traveling especially in this book as well because the paris setting is such a big part of the plot i've tried to choose books where the setting is a big part of the plot i think there's only one book i would say that i'm nervous but this book really really is and it's just making me want to travel like i'm just sitting here thinking about my gap year plans and getting to travel and getting to travel independently and hopefully getting to go to paris like by myself i've never traveled on my own before so hopefully things open up and when i get my second vaccine i can just go and be free and ugh, it's just, it's making me want to travel so badly but it's also making me very excited about the prospect of traveling and isn't really as depressing as i thought this video might be so that's good i just i love this book so much it just has good vibes and from what i have read i've only read no no and the boy next door as i've mentioned but that just did not have these cozy comforting european vibes that anna and the french kiss has i don't know if it's just because i'm english that i much prefer this european setting to the american one of lola and the boy next door but this experience <laughs> is just really fantastic and if you haven't read this book or you're only really seeing the negative reviews for it ignore them because this book is so good <laughs> i am over halfway through anna and the french kiss i am on a page 221 and it is a 400 page book so i am just over halfway i'm feeling like a little bit tired and just as much as i love this book i feel like i'm kind of just reading for the sake of reading at the moment so i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna play some sims because i am very much back on a sims kick now that i have so much time and i just bought um the dream home makeover pack and i'm really really enjoying getting to be an interior designer so i'm just playing sims a lot at the moment so yeah the plan is to play some sims until i get bored and then potentially we'll read some more later but i think i might be done for the day we will see right i am officially done for the day it is 10 o'clock now i was gonna do some more reading or say watch love island but then i just ended up watching love island and i didn't do the reading my thoughts so far on this year's love island is that it's not very good but then is it ever at this stage like we're only a week in i think like who that i'm rooting for right now I think Hugo is a major, major sweetie, but he's just never going to do well. The nice guys always finish last on this show, unfortunately, but he is very, very sweet. I think Kaz and Toby would be incredibly wholesome, but I don't think Toby is interested, but I would really love for that relationship to flourish. I think they'd be really, really sweet and cute and adorable. I think Liberty is going to get screwed over, and I think that she's going to be that down-to-earth relatable girl that the whole country, like, backs and roots for. I think she's going to fill that role this year and i kind of hope that she does get screwed over just because i hate jake he just gives me massively creepy vibes like there was just something about jake like he's not exactly talking about liberty in the most respectful way which i don't love but there's just something about the way he behaves himself the way he holds himself that makes me feel like he is a massive creep yeah we'll see how it progresses it's only the first week i'm sure by the time you guys see this video you will know a lot more about love island but then so we'll see how things turn out but yeah i'm still halfway through anna and the french kiss i didn't really get anything done i'm gonna watch some tv and i'm just gonna chill and get a really good night's sleep hopefully so i'll see you in the morning it is like half seven eight o'clock the next day i haven't vlogged all day i've literally been sorting out the books and organizing stuff all day but i have now finished anna and the french kiss i just committed the last couple hours to reading it i still love it i will say the emotional cheating is quite bad in this book now that i'm older and in a relationship i see how wrong this book actually is now the emotional cheating much much more than like the kiss or anything like that but i'd say overall i still love this book i still absolutely loved being 
in Paris. This is such a good book setting wise. You really feel like you are exploring Paris. So this was a perfect choice for Paris. I'm just gonna chill for the rest of the night. I'm really not in the mood to like read or chat or anything. But tomorrow we pick a new city and I will check in with you when we do. Good morning guys. I didn't really vlog yesterday. I have a feeling today will be much of the same but I thought I would pop in around midday and tell you that I want to start reading and fill you in on where we're going next. So the next city we are visiting is Amsterdam and I asked Twitter for help on this one and Twitter suggested the girl in the blue coat. I have seen this floating around in the book community for years now and I've heard good things. This is not the kind of book I would normally read. This is a historical fiction World War II setting about our main character who delivers black market goods and then one day they are asked to track down a missing girl. So yeah, it's not really what I would read but finding books set in Amsterdam that were what I would normally read was quite difficult and Amsterdam was the most important city on this list because I wasn't just going to visit Amsterdam, I was supposed to live in Amsterdam for my year abroad. I was supposed to attend VU University and study there before I couldn't anymore so Amsterdam is the most important city to visit in this vlog. So the girl in the blue coat it is. I think this is going to be the book that I like the least but we'll give it a go. It's important to put yourself out there and I'm gonna like start reading this today. I'm getting my hair done tomorrow which you guys might see, depends if I'm too anxious to film clips of it. So I will be reading this during my hair appointment because it's going to be long. I will update you as I read on what I think. I'm back to blonde. I'm so happy about it. I haven't been properly blonde since I started my channel but this is kind of like I'm, I'm normally blonde. Between lockdowns and being at uni, I just haven't been able to get my highlights touched up in over, like a year and a half. But I finally feel like myself again, like absolutely no hate to having dark hair. I mean, I naturally have dark hair, but I just don't feel like myself with dark hair. I think I'm quite a bright light person. I want to bring in light energy into my life. And just a simple thing like looking in the mirror and seeing light hair just really helps me with that. So I'm very happy to be feeling back to being myself again. I got so much reading done whilst I was waiting for the foils to lift. I am now almost finished with The Girl in the Blue Coat. This book is not what I thought it would be. Very, very interesting. Like I'm loving learning about a history and a side of the war from like like Amsterdam's perspective which is not a perspective I've ever ever been taught or their role in the war so this is like incredibly interesting to learn about the historical events that I didn't know about and this book is like written in a very intriguing way it's very very accessible it doesn't feel confusing or too bogged down in the history that it's not accessible so that's good it's just like I will give it objectively a good rating but like personally it's just not my kind of Book. like it's very much centered around like war and like resisting the war and secret underground resistance and whilst it's really interesting to read and I'm really enjoying it once I'm actually reading it I don't want to pick it up and it is kind of affecting my mood in like a bit of a downer kind of way but I am really really glad that I decided to branch out and read this book because it's now like one of those like war like classic war stories that i can say i've read i'm really really happy that i did pick this up it's just like personally not gonna be a favorite for me not really the type of book i would go for but i think i've decided to rate this one objectively more so than like based on my enjoyment because i normally rate based on my enjoyment of them but because this isn't my normal book it doesn't seem fair to do that so I will rate this one objectively I think I've literally been doing nothing sitting in a chair getting my hair bleached all morning well for the past three hours but I'm exhausted for some reason I feel so so tired so I'm gonna knock out the rest of this book just lie in bed and watch TV for the next couple hours. England are playing in the Euros tonight, the Euro semi-finals tonight. I kind of want them to lose just because I really don't want to see an Italy-England match because who the hell do I support? I'm half Italian and I'm half English. Like, what do I do? I will update you when I have something to update you on right now. My arm is getting so sore and it's shaking, so I'm going to go. <laughs> it is now, like decently late afternoon on Thursday. It's like three o'clock. I haven't filmed anything today. I'm just not 
in a filming mood at all like i have to film a video i have to film and edit a video for tomorrow morning and i just i don't have anything to film every idea that i think of i don't like and i don't want to do so it's just one of those days as i have finished the girl in the blue coat i ended up giving it a four stars because i decided to review it objectively as i mentioned so the next place that i would like to visit is sicily i'm assuming you guys all know what book i've chosen for this i think there's only one book that is like somewhat well known that is set on Sicily and that is The Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This is about witches set on the island of Sicily so this is the pick for that. I don't have the really pretty fairy loot edition sadly but this will do. So I chose Sicily because if you don't know I am half Italian. My dad is Sicilian and I have all of my dad's side of the family still live there. We go every summer, we go see them. And I credit that as half the reason that I studied archeology. span Obviously with COVID, I haven't been able to go in a few years and I would very much like to go back to Sicily and see my family. Like I would like to do that, but it's not looking like that's gonna happen anytime soon. So that's where this comes in. <laughs> I don't know how big of a role the setting is gonna play in this book because it is a fantasy. So I was actually quite surprised when I found out that it was like set in Sicily. I Googled it like, three times it is definitely set there so it counts and I'm gonna start reading this today hopefully something interesting will happen to me and I will actually have decent like vlog clips but like right now I have no life nothing's happening I do apologize I have not vlogged in quite some time I don't know what happened I just Oh, Marvin. I kept reading all of the books, but I just kind of stopped having things to vlog. So I don't even know where I left off. I think I was starting Kingdom of the Wicked. I have now finished Kingdom of the Wicked. I gave it a four stars. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like the Sicily setting wasn't that pertinent to the plot. I feel like exactly the same thing could have happened anywhere else in the world and it would have made sense. But I enjoyed the Sicily setting. It just made it that much more enjoyable for me. I just thought it was a really, really interesting book. I did get a bit of a bookish crush on the prince of wrath very excited to see where the next book goes and i actually will be continuing on with this series so i found a, a series that i really really enjoy through this video so that's a win then i decided to take rome off of the agenda just because rome was eat pro love by elizabeth gilbert and i like went back through my goodreads and saw that i only gave this a two stars and now i'm really not in the mood to read it and whilst i have a set tbr i'm still a little bit of a mood reader and i think i'm very close to a slump and that will really push me over the edge so i'm taking rome off the list if you guys really like this video and you'd want to see a part two i can always re-add rome and find a different book i'm sure there are plenty of books set in rome so that's fine that's not an issue and so then that just leaves prague which is the last city to visit and as i'm sure you've guessed because there's not many books set in prague i have decided to read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, which is another book I put in my anti TBR as a book that I would never read. But alas, here we are. I will never continue on with the series, I don't think. I think it's just going to be too much work and the books are too old. But it's set in Prague. It's a it's a YA fantasy that I will enjoy. So I'm going to try and smash that out today. I'm heading down to Exeter for graduation in two days time, which I'm feeling really anxious about, actually. I'm not looking forward to traveling. Yeah, I've just become a bit of a homebody and I think I'm going to have some separation anxiety when I leave again. If I don't get it done before then, I can at least like smash out the last bit of reading on the train. I think I should be able to finish it today or tomorrow and therefore finish this vlog. I have just had some book mail so I figured we could open it together. I do know what this is. This came about where essentially I finished Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and during my tears and my sobbing I went on Book Depository and I ordered more YA Contemporaries. I know what this is, but let's unbox it anyway. Ignore Marvin, he's just very clingy today. I got Isla and the Happily Ever After. This is actually very in keeping with this video because I read Anna and the French Kiss for the Paris section. And now we have Isla and the Happily Ever After. I do need to reread Lola and the Boy Next Door at some point. 
I know I don't need to know what happens in that book to understand this one, but it just feels like I should go in order, even though I really didn't enjoy Lola and the Boy Next Door. I thought that was really like, quite a bad book by Stephanie Parkins, actually. What bookmark did I get today? Oh, they're not doing the, uh, the comic strips anymore. They're just doing a... Uh... Name a book that's a reading escape. That's I'm not gonna keep that. What the hell, book depository? I like the comic book ones. Some book mail on a day when I am super tired and drained and just want to crawl into bed. This has been nice. Hello, friends. I'm here with Marvin. He is being very, very clingy today. I think he's just super tired, bless him. But I just wanted to like pop in and say that I've made a little bit of progress with Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I always forget what this book is called. A tiny section of the way through. This book is not as good as I thought it would be. It's quite unique, but I don't understand what's happening really. Maybe it's one of those books where like everything kind of becomes clear as you read. I just, I don't get the hype surrounding that series right now. Kind of standing by what I said when I said that I would never finish the series or want to read it because it's not really calling to me right now. I find myself zoning out most of the time. I haven't been able to read as much as I wanted to today. I've had some like errands to do. Basically uh, the charity that I volunteer for has asked me to set up a YouTube channel for them so I've been doing that all morning and like uploading their first video and stuff and then I was also applying to a job. We're just gonna lie in bed and read some more of Daughter of Smoke and Bone and I will film and do the other things that I need to do tomorrow. I'll just, I'll procrastinate. It'll be fine. It won't be fine, but I'll get it done. I always do. Both of my dogs just have a thing for playing with water bottles. I, there's going to be a lot of crinkling in the background. I can't take it off him. I am just popping in to let you know that I finished Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. And I'm honestly going to give this book a one star. I really really disliked it i just thought it was very very over complicated and i just couldn't wrap my head around it at all like i don't understand the plot i couldn't tell you anything that happened i didn't connect with the character at all i did quite like the beginning i didn't mind the beginning it was shaping up to be like a pretty dull beginning but like like it was gonna get good and then it didn't get good it just got overly complex and i had no idea where i was in the story or like what timeline was like i just i had absolutely no idea what was going on and like that could be my fault because i found this book boring enough that i kept zoning out so that's partly my fault but also I read fantasy a lot, like I'm not like a fantasy noob. I should have been able to pick this up if it had been written well. But then why does everyone love it so much? I don't know. I didn't enjoy this. I found it to be a very confusing experience. And alas, Prague was unfortunately a disappointing city to visit. So now I'll just have to actually go to Prague to make up for the fact that I really dislike this book. Prague is the final city that we have checked off of our list and the traveling is done. I mean, my traveling isn't done because I'm traveling to Exeter tomorrow, but like the book traveling is done. <laughs> and so there we have my traveling to places I should have visited during my year abroad using books instead of planes. This honestly ended up being quite a fun video to film. I know I was terrible at filming and got little footage, but in terms of like the reading, I got to reread an old favorite and Anna and the French Kiss. Still love it. Still one of Stephanie Parkin's best books. And I found a new book that I really enjoyed and want to continue with in Kingdom of the Wicked. I even branched out a little bit with The Girl in the Blue Coat. And whilst I won't reread it and it's not really my kind of thing, I enjoyed it more than I ever thought that I would. So again, found something new that I enjoyed. A very promising week of reading. I am very much on track to like reading quite a bit this July, which is very exciting and I'm excited about it. Thank you guys very much for watching, especially if you made it this far. If you did make it this far, why not hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I upload twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday. So why not stick around? There's no shortage of bookish content here. 
You guys can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter, which is at Paige in Chapter. I'm very active there and it's just a good way to get to know me a little bit more and control more of what you are seeing on this channel if you are interested in doing that, but obviously no pressure. I do really hope that you enjoyed this vlog. If you did and you want to see more, you want to see a part two, you want to see more themed vlogs, comment down below, let me know your ideas or if you're just interested in a part two and I would love to hear that. Thank you guys very very much for watching, I hope you have a fantastic week and there are no reading slumps in your future and I will see you on Wednesday for my next video. Bye guys!